everyone i am dr yogesh i welcome you to this session on genetics and molecular biology lecture series after discussing southern blot techniques under recombinant dna technology we are now discussing polymerase chain reaction kerry mullis invented pcr in 1989 and who was awarded nobel prize in 1993 and after that the evolution of genetic genetics and molecular biology has reached the unimaginable so let us understand this polymerase chain reaction and how simple it is it is the simplest technique in genetics and molecular biology so let us see what is polymerase chain reaction the polymerase chain reaction is a molecular biology technique that allows quick replication of dna and with pcr the minute quantities of genetic material can be amplified into millions of times this procedure is in vitro and within a few hours it allows us for a rapid and reliable detection of genetic markers of infectious diseases or cancers or genetic disorders and it is a method that allows logarithmic amplification of short dna sequences within a longer double stranded dna molecule so what is pcr pcr is a cyclical process containing three steps of about uh, 30 cycles right so denaturation or the separation of the dna duplex is the first step it occurs at 94 to 98 degree centigrade and it happens for 15 seconds to 2 minutes <coughs> in the next step that is the annealing step or priming step of the oligonucleotide primers the primers are going to bind to the complementary sequences at 37 to 60 degree centigrade for 30 seconds to 2 minutes and third step is extension or polymerization of the primer with tag polymerase which is heat stable and in the presence of dntps about at uh, 70 degree centigrade by tag polymerase for 30 seconds and this durations and temperatures of these three steps needs to be standardized needs to be standardized based on the genetic sequence and the instrumentation used for the same sequence you may find different steps or a different timing or a different temperature being used for polymerase chain reaction of the same sequence coming to pcr cycle 1 in the first cycle it will result in new types of dna product with a fixed fiber end which is determined by the primer so primer is attaching here it will start polymerizing from fiber end to 3 prime end so it will have fixed fiber end determined by the primer and the next step variable 3 prime ends extending past the other primer will be available in the cycle 1 so after it extends with a fixed fiber prime end and a variable 3 prime end we will have a lot many segments after the cycle 1 finishes so after cycle 1 coming to cycle 2 there will be two more products with variable 3 prime end but also two desired products of fixed length with both 5 prime and 3 prime ends defined by the primer sequences coming to cycle 3 whereas the products with variable 3 prime ends increase arithmetically so the formula is the quantity or amount is 2 to the power n where n is the number of cycle so this is arithmetically increasing the desired product initially increases exponentially so the desired product is this much okay so both 5 prime end and 3 prime end are determined by the primer sequences and the sequences which are not determined by primer may be at 5 prime end or 3 prime end will be excluded after we run the product of pcr in electrophoresis so at the end of pcr and subsequent electrophoresis we will get a product of interest where both 5 prime end and 3 prime end of the dna sequences are determined by the primer so different phases of pcr are until the reaction reaches a stationary phase until the reactants are depleted the reaction will continue or it is continued till we have uh, allowed the reaction to occur in thermocycler usually after 25 or so cycles the desired product accounts for the vast majority of the dna strand so we get sufficient quantity of dna from a single dna strand after say uh, 25 or so cycle coming to the analysis of pcr products so we have run the pcr we have a pcr product we have to see whether actually the pcr product has been obtained or not or whether it is obtained was it correctly obtained or we have a sequence of interest 
so for that we need to run the product in gel electrophoresis and it is subjected to ethidium bromide staining and it is the common method of analysis of pcr products with pcr the specific fragments can be amplified and rflp or sequencing can be undertaken without isolating the organism the product could also be analyzed by blotting or transfer techniques to nylon membrane and hybridization with specific probes can be employed to detect the product of interest the incorporation of biotin or digoxygenin labeled deoxy urine triphosphate during amplification and detection of colorimetric or luminescent technique are also other approaches for detection and quantitation of pcr product to understand the extent of quantity we have uh, obtained as a product of pcr we need to subject it to the biotin labeled deoxyuridine triphosphate amplification and detection of colorimetric assays also or luminescent techniques can also be employed to detect the product and quantitate it This is a literature please refer to this for other studies thank you so much please subscribe to the channel hit like and share the video thanks once again for watching the video